Welcome to a new edition of Clavertis Miller's Fine Arts Gallery here in the Poconos. Today I have a special guest with me uh, who's a friend, uh, who's a singer, a writer, a producer. He's a founding member of a group from the 60s and 70s called the Invitations. And they have, if you're familiar with that uh, time period, or if you were back in that time period, they had a, a great hit call. And you correct me if I'm wrong. Is the uh, they the, say they say the the lady is crazy. Yeah, they say the girls. They say the girl is crazy. Okay, right. great, great, great. Yeah. But uh, they are residents here in the Poconos. And just to get into it a little bit with you, um, where did you guys come from? Before moving to the Poconos, where were you living? Okay, originally, all of the members that, uh, when I joined the group, the group was called the Tip Toppers, and that was like in the early 60s, like 1963, uh, around that time. And uh, by 1964, uh, we had members from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. One was uh, actually born in Brooklyn. Right. Myself, I was from Richmond, Virginia, and the other young man was from Baltimore, uh, Billy Morris. So as time went on, that particular group of invitations, uh, Billy Morris, Bobby Rivers singing bass, Billy Morris singing baritone and second. I'm singing first and second. And we also had a young man before them by the name of uh, Roy Jolly, mm -hmm. who's from Augusta. Uh, he wasn't, I don't think he was from, I think he was from actually the Atlanta area right. of Georgia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he was the lead singer on all of our stuff that we did, say around 64. Right, right, uh, right. Seven or eight different songs, maybe a, a, a bit more for Donna Boyce records. Mm -hmm. So you guys, so it started in Brooklyn then? Yeah, it actually started. started in Brooklyn because, uh -huh. as I mentioned, they were called the Tip Toppers, and mm. they actually came, they just did a, a, a sprint in, in Switzerland, and they came home, right. and then they, they needed another singer, and they approached me. So when you guys actually started out, uh, was it talent shows or shows themselves that you, when you first got on stage? Mm, no, not really. Uh, back in the 60s, the heyday of the 60s, there were cl clubs, uh, nightclubs just about on every corner mm -hmm. in, in, in Brooklyn, this certain street called Fulton Street. Mm -hmm. And if you had a group and you would go in and you, you, you would perform, right, just go in and perform a number, mm -hmm. like say, for instance, on a Thursday night or something right, like that. Right, right. If you were very, very good, the next week that club or that bar mm -hmm. would hire you for the whole weekend. Okay. So okay. you would do Friday, Saturday. Sometime a matinee on Sunday, uh, you know. So uh, that's basically how my group started. I originally uh, came from Richmond, Virginia, and uh, straight out of the military, I spent two weeks at home, and I came to uh, New York, and that was in 1962. Right, right. So having been, having never been in the, in an atmosphere like that, even though. I uh, was in a singing group in the military. We had a contract with United Artists. So I came as a singer with, uh, to uh, fulfill that contract. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The other three fellows, uh, four fellows that was in the group at that time, named the Champlains, they were getting out sporadically after I did. So right. I had a whole year out by myself. Mm -hmm. I danced with a dance team for about a good six or seven months called the Magnificent Three. Uh, so, right. so what was the <clears throat> the there were some some groups also in the seventies that you guys sort of uh, were affiliated not affiliated with but you were around who were in that uh, Motown area were there any of those guys that you we we did we did um and we did uh, quite a few shows one of the shows was called Ebony Affair and that show was actually taped in Alexandria, Virginia, but it was a syndicated show. Mm -hmm. So it mm -hmm. came on just like Soul Train and some of the other train uh, 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 shows like the one that Jerry B. did out of New York. Right. So right. we were guests on both of those shows a lot. Mm -hmm. 
Right. You know, uh, though it happens, so happens that Ebony Affair, the, the TV show, actually came out of D.C. and there was a couple, a uh, uh, few young men. Uh, they actually b uh, bought a club which we had performed at in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And that was called uh, Mark IV. So we do the TV show, perform at the club, do the TV show, perform at the club. And a the couple of theater gigs. Uh, we actually opened in 1964, we opened for the Temptations mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. the Howard Theater. Right. And right. that was the original group. David was in the group, but so was Paul at that time. Right. Paul. Well, see, what I didn't tell the audience also is that um, this young man is a, a super 81 year old performer who still performs from time to time. That on my good days. <laughs> on his good, <laughs> on his good I'll days. Do, I'll do an electric slide for you or something. Well, tell us a little bit about your 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 England uh, connection. You okay, guys the England connection was horrific. In the beginning, it was horrific mm -hmm. uh, because we had a manager, and uh, our uh, his initials were BM. Mm -hmm. I'll just say that. Oh, and <laughs> and this young man also was managing a group called the Troy, the Toys, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So the Toys was like our sister group, and we were the invitations. However, we were sent to England to perform for like three and a half to four months. And when we got to England, we found out that we were performing as some kind of drifters, American drifters or something like that. Mm -hmm. Our manager at that time, BM, had told us, learn a lot of drifter songs because they love drifter songs. Now, we had about maybe three or four songs with Donna Boys at that time. Hallelujah, What's Wrong With Me Baby, written on the wall. Uh, you can Google all of those songs, great songs, too. And, and uh, at any rate, the writers and uh, arrangers were Denny, Denny Randall and Sandy Linder, right? So they, and they had the big hit with the, uh, uh, the tours called Lover's Concerto. Mm, to make a long story that. short, we get to England and we see that we're performing at this one club. The first night we went, the American Drifters that featured the invitations. So we kind of like didn't think about it too much. And we did the show. We did the Drifter song that they had prepared us to do. But then we found out uh, our manager left the next day. And we had to go to the office to pick up our passports because he left our passports at the, mm. at the uh, agent's office. Right, right. So right. we go there and we find out amongst other things, that uh, they had actually booked us as some kind of drifters. So even though it started out, you say, it's a little horrific in the beginning. Right. As, as time went on, things sort it of took changed us up about, a little bit. It took us about maybe, I would say, three three years mm -hmm. in all told to like really just clean the board and clear it. And we had to hire a barrister every time we went back. And we would mm -hmm. go back. We had uh, the young man who was actually our roadie became our manager, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. okay. So we we had our stuff legally set up. And one of the reasons that we did that is because the agency that we was working for at that particular time also had Charlie and Inez Fox, mm -hmm. which okay. Charlie and okay. Inez Fox yes. were yes. brother sisters. That they right, had right, Mockingbird, right. Ah. right? The word was is that they went on to perform one night and their taxes wasn't paid, so they incarcerated them. Oh, you know, and then they left the country, and I think they never went back to uh, work there. Oh, that's not a good thing. You had to pay those taxes. That's right. Yeah. So by us hiring a barrister and we had, moving on from that agency and us trying to book our own gigs down mm -hmm. the line, or uh, having uh, our manager Leo the clerk book uh, book all our gigs. We kind of got around everything. Uh, so okay. we would go back and forth for quite a few years. In 1973, we had come home. Mm -hmm. And we were actually, every time we came home, we, I think we had at least 
three to four special clubs that we worked in. Right, right. Okay. Every time we came home. Mm -hmm. So you know, at least if you worked uh, just the weekends only, those three or four clubs would be like there for a month. Right. So we would be home for a month. We could go into the studio. We could do background work. We could work on our own songs. And then four months later, we we're back in England again. Well, that's the, the interesting thing about that, um, going back and forth, even overseas England, and the amount of uh, fanfare that you got there, yeah. which a lot of musicians from, especially black musicians right. from this country, they didn't get the come up them, so to speak, right. here, but they got it there in England where they were really big hits. That's right. But, uh, uh, it, it, it's amazing because... Uh, there were certain artists mm -hmm. that 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 we kind of admired. Uh, one one of the groups we did admire. In fact, we were instrumental in sending them to England uh, after the first time that we was there, and we sent this group called the Belors, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and they had a hit record as the Belors, mm -hmm. right? And they 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 stopped singing and they all gotten jobs. One was an English teacher. One worked on the White Stone Bridge as a toll taker. Uh, there used to be a big department store on 14th Street called Klein's. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, well, yeah, well, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. So he right. was, uh, Richie was the head shipping clerk at Klein's. And the other guy, Romy, the lead singer, actually, mm -hmm. was, uh, you know, that's that was his job. He just sang. So, we sent we we sent them over. Uh, they right away decided that they were gonna go back. Right. After right. doing three weeks, they right. went back and they did three months. But while they were there, they met an agent agent from out of Boston mm -hmm. who regularly corralled them from underneath. Right. The, right. The, the Tempest organization that was bringing over all these acts and the phony names. Mm -hmm. So they turned out to be the Fantastics, mm -hmm. uh, uh, right? So they not only turned out to be fantastic, they didn't give up their American citizenship, but they just also gained the European uh, uh, right. uh, uh, citizenship. So they actually moved. So they stayed over there. They, they stayed, they stayed over there. there. Not only did they stay over there, I can remember having a, a, a chat with Edwin Starr. Mm -hmm. And and I think he had war out at the time. And, and uh, they would not let him work out of Motown. Mm -hmm. In fact, they he had his own label. Right, right, right. And Motown bought that label up. Uh, so now, I mean, you're still working. The imitations are still going. Right. Not as often, but now you're not working as often. with... Um, but we are the invitations over here, and now we're working to try to get our name, the invitations, there out. Well, and also to let you guys know that he is the the last remaining member of yes. the invitation. So yes. we we have some history here. Yeah, that's going. I'm um, the last founding member. I've been the last founding member for for quite a few years uh, of the group. Uh, we've lost quite a few members along the way from the original members. We, I mentioned before, we was Bobby Rivers on bass, Billy Morris singing second and baritone, uh, Roy, Roy Jolly, who was a heck of a lead singer out of, Georgia, uh, out of Georgia. We lost him, and we replaced him with a young man from North Carolina by the name of Herman Kofi, who was an excellent lead singer also. However, I came home from England one time. We were doing background work. And I got a call from a, a gentleman that I knew, uh, had some dealings with called Joel Diamond. And Joel Diamond actually heard that we were back in the country and, and he wanted to know what were we were doing because he had an idea for a song that he thought that we could really do that was fantastic. And the song was by Jerry Butler. Mm -hmm. For your precious love. Okay, you know it well. So, yeah, back in those days, you had to actually contact the company or the artist what, to get approval to do the, do the song. Mm -hmm. You don't mm -hmm. have to do that anymore. Right, right. You know, so at any rate, he got the approval to do a version of that song. Uh, we got the call, 
uh, and I heard you guys were back in the United States, so what are you doing? So I tell him, and I say, you know, my co-writer, which was O'Neill Johnson, we call him Duke, uh, said, we just recorded a guy from Barbados. He said, from Barbados, what are you doing, Caribbean music? I said, no, we're doing R&B, you got to hear this guy. Right, this right. guy sounds just like he's from South Carolina somewhere, mm. right? So he says, oh, I said, we recorded a song uh, with him called They Say the Girl's Crazy. He said, let me hear it. Mm -hmm. So I sent him the song, and he said, man, this guy be perfect for Jerry Butler's For Your Precious Love. So I let him hear the song. He takes it to Polydor Records, but when he takes it to Polydor Records, it's not to promote the group itself. It's mm -hmm. to promote his business, which is Silver Blue Records. Uh, and who was the singer that you, you're talking about? Uh, the, the young man? Yeah. That, yeah. That, this is Joel Diamond. Oh, okay. okay. He, and he had, okay. he had a label that he had opened up called Silver Blue Records. Right. Was this in the 60s or the 70s? Oh, no. This was in the 70s. Okay. By, okay. by, the, time, by the time he got to Polydor Records and they said, listen, we'll give you a distribution deal for your label which is right, what he was right, looking for, right, right? Right, Only if these guys, if you can sign these guys, because obviously right. he told them that was two different entities. Right. Lou was on his own, and the three of us was in. In fact, Cofield and I was in one group, and Duke was in another, mm -hmm. right? So he got to us, explained the situation to us. Uh, we said, okay, Billy Morris did not want to fly anymore. Mm, mm. Roy Jolly, uh, not Roy Jolly, but Bobby Rivers actually had left and gone to Japan mm -hmm. to sing bass for the original Platters, Tony Williams Is that and the right? Platters. Yes, oh, nice. Herb, nice. I don't know where Herb had went, but right. Bobby Rivers actually went with uh, Tony's wife, Helen, right. and he stayed with, even after Tony passed, he mm -hmm. stayed with the Platters for quite a while before going to the coasters. Right. And today you're still writing music yourself. Still writing, still writing, still producing, right. uh, working with two different production companies now. Do mm. you guys have anything coming out that you're going to put out into the public uh, yep. soon? Yeah, pretty soon. In fact, uh, March the 6th, we're in the studio uh, uh, doing background work and, and, and laying some lead vocals mm -hmm. and uh, saxophone is, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the feature in the saxophone on it, the right. young man that's going to be singing it. Okay. Good, um, good, good. That's so fun. that particular song, it has an island flavor, and it's really good. It's, good, it's a sing-along. Ah, well, You'll recognize it right away. Can't wait to hear it. Yeah, can't wait to be, hear it. It's good. It's good. 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 Well, look, I, I, I do appreciate it. I thank you so much for coming by and talking with us and letting the public know about the uh, your group and so forth and what you good. guys were doing. And I appreciate I thank you. I thank you, sir, so much. Yes, sir. And I'll be back because there's a million stories <laughs> in this naked city. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to thank you guys for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Take care.